Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Patrick Dean, McMaster um, University's President and Vice Chancellor. I'd like to welcome you all this morning. It's wonderful to see so many of Hamilton's leaders uh, here with us this morning. Uh, you're all obviously welcome here at McMaster, uh, a university that has long standing and strong ties uh, with the city of Hamilton. It is all of you who make uh, the city of Hamilton such a tremendous place to work and to live in. We're also thrilled to welcome our Premier, uh, Kathleen Wynne, back to the campus, uh, as well as Ontario's Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Ted McMeekin, um, uh, Ontario's Minister of Transportation, Stephen Del Duca, uh, our Mayor, Fred Eisenberger, and the President and CEO of Metrolinx, Bruce McCain. Seeing McMaster expand its role in our community is one of my personal commitments, as I think many of you know. Uh, I think it is fair to say, however, that it, it is the goal of everyone in this room to increase the vibrancy of our city and the, and the prosperity that all of its citizens enjoy. I uh, know today's announcement will be an important part of our future success and the glorious future of the city of Hamilton. So without further delay, it's my great pleasure to welcome the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne, to the stage. here as well as the mayor thank you very much for being here there are candidates and uh, and people who are interested in and connected to the, the future of this great city so thank you for being here and uh, in terms of the history of this great city I want to uh, recognize the long history of First Nations and Métis people in Ontario and show respect today to the communities of the Six Nations of the Grand River Territory and the Mississaugas of the New Credit um, Patrick thank you for in, uh, in opening the doors and uh, having us here on this beautiful campus and I know that uh, you've had a busy year and you're going into your graduation so uh, all the best with that. I'm delighted to be here with, uh, with um, Ted McMeekin and Stephen Del Duca and Bruce and Fred thank you very much for, uh, for being here as well. There is so much happening here in Hamilton. Um, you have a diverse economy, and a beautiful natural setting, a thriving artistic community, a well-educated workforce, and a strong ecosystem for research and innovation. You have a lot to be proud of and a lot to be excited about. And uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, talk with the mayor about the things that are happening in Hamilton. And I think that uh, you're all and we all should be excited about the revitalization that's happening here. Our province of strength is built on the collective strength of all of our communities. So when Hamilton succeeds, that contributes to our overall success. We are all connected. La force de notre province repose sur la force collective de ses collectivités, de sorte que si Hamilton réussit, nous réussissons tout. In fact, for hundreds of years, Ontario's economic development has relied on this city in a number of ways. One has been your proximity to transportation routes that connect our economy by land and by water. And for decades, our province understood that vital link between economic growth and transportation. And we built ourselves up by investing in infrastructure here and across the province. And then, like many other places in North America, we let that advantage ebb away. We underinvested in our roads and our bridges and transit in particular. But we have to end those days, and that is, that is the conversation that we are having here today. I, I will just say that I just, uh, I had the opportunity to be in New York and Washington last week, <clears throat> and this discussion about infrastructure, this need for investment in infrastructure, is not uh, one that we are having alone here in Ontario. It is happening across North America. So the fact that there has been underinvestment in uh, the past 30 years or so is a reality that is being confronted by governments all over North America. So it's very important to me that we are stepping up and we are making those investments. The Greater Toronto and Hamilton area is one of the largest and fastest growing urban regions in North America. We've worked hard to attract talent, capital and culture from all over the world, but we can't take our success for granted. 
the GTHA needs a modern, integrated transit system to seamlessly connect our communities and their growing numbers of people and businesses. I hear this all the time from business leaders, from people who are looking for uh, places to bring their businesses. They want that integrated and seamless transportation system. Our quality of life and the future of our economy depend on it. So our government is making up for lost time and we're doing that building. Under Moving Ontario Forward, we're setting aside $31.5 billion over the next 10 years for transit, transportation and other priority infrastructure projects across the province. This is part of the largest infrastructure investment in Ontario's history. For the Greater Toronto Hamilton area, Moving Ontario Forward funding means we are bringing regional express rail service to the GO train network. This will provide all-day electrified service every 15 minutes or better in core sections of five GO lines, including the Lakeshore line between Burlington and Oshawa. It means we're increasing GO trips to Hamilton GO Center and the new West Harbour GO station, which is already under construction. When Regional Express Rail is completed in 2024, the number of weekly trips will go from today's 1,500 to a transformation of 6,000 weekly GO train trips. And in just five years, there will be over 600 more weekly GO train trips running throughout the Greater Toronto Hamilton area. We're also building a new LRT line from Mississauga to Brampton. Now, all of this means that people will be able to move around the Greater Toronto Hamilton area with speed, with ease, and with less emission of climate change causing greenhouse gases. But it is what these historic investments mean for our economy that is most exciting. Hamilton's economy, like that of our province, is transitioning towards the high skills knowledge industries. Industries that will drive our growth and support our prosperity well into the future. That's why our four-part plan to build Ontario up starts by investing in the talent and the skills of our people. And it's why the second part of our plan is about moving modern, about building modern infrastructure, including the Moving Ontario Forward plan that I've just described. Decades ago, governments' in investments in ports, canals, and railroads helped bring Steeltown into an era of industrial prosperity. Today, we need infrastructure that drives Hamilton's economic prosperity in the 21st century knowledge economy. For Hamilton to remain an important driver of our regional and provincial economy, and a place where people can continue to find more opportunity and more security in life, we need transit that connects the people of Hamilton to each other and to the people of the Greater Toronto Hamilton area. So, it's my great pleasure to announce today that the Ontario government will be providing up to $1 billion to fund the building of new light rail trains. The new line will have tracks separated from traffic for new modern light rail vehicles to run from Queenston Circle in the east to right here at McMaster University in the west. It will also connect directly to the new West Harbour GO station and protect for a future high order pedestrian connection to the Hamilton GO Centre station. Construction is currently underway on West Harbour, which will be open in time for the Toronto 2015 Pan Am Parapan Games. And the LRT will be extended further east to Eastgate Square, and discussions about that and the details about that will uh, continue between Metrolinx and the City of Hamilton. I'm also pleased to announce today that in addition to building a new <coughs> LRT line, our government will extend GO Transit service on the Lakeshore West Line to a new station at Centennial Parkway in Stony Brook. So construction 
on, the news, on that new station is expected to begin in 2017. These investments in Hamilton and across the region are going to transform travel and our sense of connectivity and opportunity in the GTHA. They will connect us like we've never been connected before. They'll protect our environment, create jobs, and drive growth. But at their core, what these investments are really building is our future. And I'm looking here, there's a very young man sitting right here. And Dylan Attack, who's a very young man, is standing back there. So these announcements are for you. That's what they're about. Because you know what? By the time all of this is built, I won't be in this job. Well, I might be, but I won't. I promise Jane I'm not Hazel McCallion, so I'm not going to stay forever. But it really is about you and about you and about how, how your city is going to function and how you're going to be able to travel around the region. And one of the reasons that governments have in the past, and not in the even distant past, but in the past have not made investments is that it's hard sometimes for politicians to think beyond an election cycle. So when I say things like the work on that station will start in 2017, well, that means it's not going to be finished by 2018 when the next election comes around. But you know what? That's not the point. The point is that government exists to make long-term investments, to look into the future, and to do things that we cannot do on our own. So that's why I'm so thrilled that we're able to make these announcements, put the money aside, get the work started, so that by the time you, and what's your name? Greg? Jake. By the time Jake is in his 20s and he's working who knows where, he's going to be able to travel seamlessly around this region. Around this region. So, Jake, this is for you. Thank you very much. Can I see any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I'd now uh, like to call upon Minister Del Duca, Ontario's Minister of Transportation, to say a few words. See you. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a real pleasure for me to be here uh, with all of you in this wonderful community to share the wonderful news and this tremendous update uh, for this community. Of course, first I want to begin by thanking the Premier for her remarks, for the announcement that she's made, but most importantly for her uh, dedicated leadership, specifically on transit and transportation. Uh, and more than that, for her determination to make the right decisions, regardless of whether or not they're always perceived to be politically convenient, especially as it relates to building the province up uh, and moving the province forward. <coughs> and I also want to say thank you to Ted McMeekin, Minister McMeekin, uh, my friend and colleague. As I was driving down here uh, this morning for this announcement, I was thinking about that time last summer, uh, a few weeks after I was first appointed to serve as the Minister of Transportation, uh, when Ted came up to me in the legislature and said, would you mind coming down to the community, down to Hamilton, to meet with some municipal representatives and hear a bit more uh, about the community's plans and hopes and aspirations for uh, transit investments. That took place about a month after I became the Minister of Transportation, and it was a wonderful opportunity for me to hear directly about how passionate this community is about getting this right. But since that point in time, as he's always done as an MPP from this community, uh, Ted has been an advocate and a champion, and he's been relentless. Uh, we sit fairly close to each other in the chamber, so I can attest to his relentlessness uh, with respect to standing up for his community. And so what we are doing, not only here in Hamilton, but right across this region, is a testament as well to Ted McMeekin and the, the other people. often fond of saying it truly is a wonderful time to serve as Ontario's Minister of Transportation because of course it's important for us to continue to demonstrate that we have a plan and we do to manage congestion on our roads and highways and that working together we can and we will get it right. The challenges faced by commuters don't start or end in the city's boundaries. They are regional challenges and they require regional solutions. Ontarians want us to put progress ahead of politics and to deliver results instead of more rhetoric. And that's exactly what we're doing. As the Premier mentioned, when it comes to transit, 
the province is already investing billions of dollars in many important projects. For example, the Union Pearson Express, which will come into service June the 6th, not that long from now, uh, in time for the Pan Am Para Pan Am Games, connecting two of Canada's busiest transportation hubs, the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, and of course the Premier mentioned announcements that we've made in Mississauga and in Northwestern Toronto. Just last month, I was very proud to stand alongside the Premier in Barrie as she launched the GO Regional Express Rail project, a $13.5 billion plan that will transform the GO Transit Rail network into a faster and more frequent regional service with, as she said, electrification on core segments of the system. And improvements are already being made. <laughs> by 2020, we will increase total system capacity by 50%, positively impacting all seven of our corridors. And this is great news, great news for all residents of the entire region. The Hamilton LRT will be a critical link. One that provides, yeah, I said L. You heard me say <laughs> will be a critical link, one that provides better connections across the downtown, running between McMaster University and Queenston Circle, and ultimately to Eastgate Square. I'm delighted that the new LRT will connect to the GO network at the new West Harbor GO station, which is currently under construction, and again, as was mentioned, will be operational in time for the Pan Am Para Pan Am Games. And we will extend GO Rail service on the Lakeshore West Line from West Harbor GO at James Street North to a new GO station at Centennial Parkway in Stony Creek. All of these investments will help us to lay the foundation for a vibrant, integrated system that will help bring an economic boost to this entire region. Hamilton's new LRT will play a critical role in connecting the entire GTHA. As I noted earlier, today's announcement complements the many other uh, announcements that we've made recently and will continue to make about our commitment to investing in priority transit and transportation projects as part of our plan called Moving Ontario Forward. Together, we can ensure that Ontario families and businesses continue to benefit from new transit and transportation infrastructure options like Hamilton's LRT in the future. And as I close, I want to say, because the Premier alluded to this in her remarks when she talked about Jake and others in this room, I'm not only the Minister of Transportation, I'm not only the MPP for Vaughan, I'm also the father of two young children, two daughters, Talia and Grace. Talia is seven and Grace is four. And to the Premier's point, to emphasize, to underscore what she said, when we make these decisions, when she and our team demonstrates the leadership that we have on these files, it is, from my perspective, about making the decisions that will continue to pay a positive dividends back to the quality of life, back to our economy, for Jake, for my daughters, Talia and Grace, because these do take time. Uh, we, we require a bit of patience, they do take time, they can be disruptive in communities, but imagine how brilliant the future will be here in Hamilton and across this region because our Premier and our government are determined to get this right. Thanks very much. Minister. I would now like to welcome Bruce McKay, the President and CEO of Metrolinx, to say a few words. Well, thank you very much, Patrick. It's truly a pleasure to be here this morning in Hamilton. Uh, for someone who's been working with Hamilton for a number of years on the implementation of the big move in the regional transportation plan, this milestone is a really exciting moment of time to be here to celebrate what we can do together. Uh, I appreciate being invited to this celebration and this important announcement for the City of Hamilton and for the region as a whole. I'm always delighted to get calls from the Ministry of Transportation to meet with the Premier and the Minister on announcements of this nature. Over the past month, I've been privileged to participate in announcements related to Regional Express Rail in Barrie, the Huron Ontario Main Light Rail Transit Line in Mississauga and Brampton, the Finch West Light Rail Transit Line in Toronto, the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, which is well under construction right now in Toronto, the Union Pearson Express in Toronto and Hamilton, and here today in Hamilton. These all represent concrete examples of how we are transforming the region's transportation system, making a real difference in how people experience the daily demands of moving around our communities. The addition of new LRT service and expansion of GO services 
puts Hamilton real steps closer to having an efficient, fast, and frequent regional rapid transit system needed to help the city to position itself for the future, for its businesses to thrive, and for residents to enjoy a higher quality of life. In the coming months, the team at Metrolinx will work closely with our partners at the City of Hamilton to move forward on the next steps on the delivery of these two very important projects. We will also work with our partners in the community to create awareness and build excitement about these projects and the significant transformation that they will bring to this area. I'd like to acknowledge the commitment of the many people who have contributed to getting us to today's announcement. This includes our partners at the province of Ontario, the City of Hamilton, all the staff at Metrolinx, as well as the residents and the businesses of the communities that we'll be serving. At Metrolinx, we'll continue to work towards the vision set out in the Regional Transportation Plan to implement a fast, frequent, and expanded regional rapid transit network. We believe strongly in the benefits of the Hamilton LRT project and increases to GO train service. With today's announcement, the City of Hamilton and its residents will benefit from both of these critical projects. And of course, we look forward to welcoming thousands and thousands of new customers to these critical element, elements of the transportation system. I'm proud to be part of such an exciting time in the delivery of transportation and transit services in our region. I look forward to returning many times in the coming months and years to mark milestones as we deliver on these projects and I look forward to delivering new services to this city. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, I would now like to call upon our local champion, McMaster graduate, MPP for this riding of Ancaster, Dundas, Flamborough, Westdale, and of course, Ontario's Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, the Honourable Ted McMeekin. Good morning. I feel a bit like uh, Fred Rogers. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Don't you feel that way? Yeah. Would you be mine? <laughs> Just checking, I want to make sure we're in the right place. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks Patrick uh, very much. Uh, and uh, you're a great champion for our city as well. I want uh, everyone to know that. I, I've had a great relationship with a number of presidents here. And uh, I really enjoy working together with you and your team. Thank you. Uh, McMaster's my alma mater. I met my beloved Barbara here, 40 three years ago. <laughs> we just celebrated our 42nd anniversary a couple of days ago. So it, uh, lots of things good came out of McMaster. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a new and very exciting uh, time for uh, our city and for transit uh, uh, generally. Um, we're uh, forging uh, all kinds of new relationships here, which is always a, a good thing to do, right? We want to grow and we want to be a stronger community and we take in, thanks to you Premier, my good friend Minister Del Tuca, a really giant step today, it really is. This is a truly historic moment for our community as we continue on our monumental path of growth and development. Again, I want to thank the Premier. Uh, Premier, you've been a real champion for Hamilton, and uh, maybe not everybody knows that, but uh, you've always, uh, every single time I've needed to talk to you about Hamilton, you've, you've been there. You've taken the five, ten minutes to, to chat and to uh, encourage and uh, explore and ask questions. And, uh, you know, she really is Hamilton's champion, i got to tell you. As politicians, we've all been to many sod turnings. But I'm so proud to stand with you here today and celebrate something that is truly groundbreaking. 
with my good friend Stephen Del Duca, who uh, you mentioned we sit close together. He's just a left head turn away from when are you coming to Hamilton's? <laughs> we have lots of uh, animated conversations, so uh, hopefully not when the Premier's answering your question because he's on camera. Right? And, uh, but just Stephen, thank you for uh, for listening. Uh, you come through for us. You heard us, buddy. And I, I really appreciate it. We owe you a big time. Um, the Premier and uh, Minister Del Duca uh, not only listened to me when I spoke about the hopes and dreams of Hamilton, they, they listened to the people of Hamilton carefully, along with Bruce McQuaig, of course, um, from Metrolinx and, uh, and our own city council, like Bobby. My good friend, His Worship, Fred Eisenberger. Um, I want to note uh, in passing the presence of Bob Bertina here too, who's been a, a champion, particularly on the go side of things, which has been great. Bob, thank you for that. <laughs> Partnerships about getting things done together that you're not likely to get done by by yourself, and uh, this is a good example of that uh, Your Worship. I think you agree. It's been a long time coming, but you know, we're here. We're here. Good things take a long time. Right? Um, we came together. We literally connected the dots. Literally. And uh, we made this happen. Uh, we chose to be bold, not because any of us need to see our names in the newspaper or anything else, just because it was the right thing to do. Right? And uh, be bold or go home, I think you said to me one time, Premier being bold here today. Uh, now we've got to get down to work, Your Worship. First, your work starts in many ways now. Um, the, uh, the hope and the dream and the plan is spelled out. And we just got to make sure it comes together as quickly as we can. I would be remiss in the extreme if I didn't thank the transit and LRT advocates in the city, city council, for its, uh, its broad plan. Uh, for the um, people like uh, Brian McCaddy, who was a big champion, uh, um, you know, the, each of the folk who sent me the 20,000 tweets over the last four years. <laughs> yeah, I read every one of them. It seemed no matter what you said, it would stimulate another thousand. <laughs> um, so our, uh, and the light rail transit group that was uh, was here. They were particularly Ryan McGrail and his team that came together and worked hard to uh, keep uh, this vision uh, clearly in our, our minds. The councillors who are here, I know the mayor's going to, going to mention each of you by name, hopefully. Um, our government uh, believed in your vision, even if we couldn't always uh, talk too much about it again in, in the chamber as well. Advocate. We had to be careful because there was a lot of work to get done. So we took our time to get it right, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your comments about, uh, about what we're announcing here uh, this morning. So to the White Rail uh, Group and uh, others who have been championing this cause for a long time, a sincere, very sincere thank you. You, you literally kept this thing on the rails. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, our time is now. Hamilton, Hamilton's time is now. It is indeed a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ted. It's now with pleasure that I'd like to call on Mayor Fred Eisenberger to say a few words. Well, thank you very much. You know, I had a, a string of notes, but I don't think I'm going to need them because uh, this is a day that we've all been waiting for, Premier, Minister, Minister, Bruce. Metrolinx, uh, you know, from the days when uh, I first got on the Metrolinx board, we were 
working towards uh, this kind of an announcement that uh, would lead to Hamilton to prosperity and momentum. And I can say that uh, today we not, we're not only building momentum, we have fantastic momentum because this announcement will move our city forward in many, many significant ways. I want to acknowledge uh, some of the councillors that are here before I get rolling here. Uh, Councillor Jason Farr is here. Jason, say hello. I saw Matthew Green here earlier on. I can't see anything beyond that here. Who else am I? Aiden Johnson, sitting up here somewhere right in front of me. Councillor Lloyd Ferguson. You know, when uh, we first uh, started planning and thinking about LRT, uh, we took a tour to uh, Portland, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Calgary. Had a good hard look at what they were doing. I'm sure you visited those places as well. And uh, our, our, our newest convert to LRT from Ancaster, no less, a, a devoted car driver, I said, you know, this is a good thing for the city of Hamilton. And Lloyd Ferguson has been a, uh, an, an, an avid champion ever since, so thank, thank you for being here as well, Lloyd. You know, this, uh, this is a day that uh, uh, is, is historic in many ways. It's, uh, it's not like a revolutionary idea to have LRT. Uh, we're going actually back to the turn of the century when Terry Cook's uh, grandpa was uh, running a transit system here, and we actually had rails on the ground uh, and an LRT system that actually functioned uh, in our city uh, very efficiently and very effectively then. And of course, what happened since is the car revolution happened, and uh, that changed everything. And now we're going back to the future in terms of figuring out systems that are going to improve our, our transportation system, and not only that, also improve our air quality and our well-being of our citizens, citizens as we move forward. So I'm, I'm going to be brief in this uh, thank you, uh, Premier, uh, from the first time we met uh, from my coming back into office. Uh, you were pretty clear on what, uh, what the uh, City of Hamilton was in for. Uh, all, we, all we needed to do was put the L in the RT, and I think we've done that today. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and you know what, uh, this, that's a brilliant move to move not only the province of Ontario forward, but the city of Hamilton forward in very, very significant ways going forward. So thank you for that. I think it's a brilliant step on your part. You're showing great leadership. And I know that other communities are going to be very happy today as well. So not only do we have LRT, which is a real big win for the city of Hamilton, but we have an additional GO station at Centennial Parkway that not only makes the city of Hamilton very happy, 2017, but I know all of Niagara will be salivating today as well because this is at the beginning of the ongoing route all the way to Niagara Falls and beyond. So brilliant in every every possible way that we could possibly imagine. And I, I know I'll be getting a call from the regional chair in Niagara very soon saying, I'll yes, tell you, yeah, right, he's on the line saying, okay, when do we start shovels in the ground for the next phase? So. You know what? Many wins all around. We have some great staff that have been working on this uh, this project for years and years and years. Uh, we thank them all. Uh, the great advocates that uh, Ted McMeekin talked about have been uh, working hard and, and, and have suffered a little over the last little while. Not really sure where things were going. Losing a bit of enthusiasm. I'm hoping that today the, the enthusiasm will be back and that we're all going to move forward together to, uh, to fulfill this challenge which today is the easy part, actually implementing it and getting it done is the hard part. And I think back to Boston. I remember visiting Boston when they were in the middle of the big dig. It was a mess. Uh, you know what, was, uh, traffic was diverted everywhere. It took a long time. Uh, but at the end of the day, when it was all done, people said, why didn't we do this sooner? Why didn't we get this done a long time ago so we could have realized the benefits that we're, uh, we're realizing here today? This is exactly the same type of project. So. Premier, thank you so much. Minister Del Duca, we had a, again a meeting early on. You were very clear. Hamilton, uh, we're in for 100% capital for LRT in Hamilton. True to your words, you're here today. You put the L in LRT. Thank you for that. And to our local champion, <clears throat> which just keeps delivering uh, in, in every possible way, whether it's in the healthcare sector, now in the new Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. I know there's some good things coming forward uh, for municipalities, and uh, we all realize that. Community is all about all of us together, not any of us apart. And the Great Cup. And the Great Cup. <laughs> and the stadium. And, and <clears throat> the stadium's finished, folks, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. A great event a few days ago uh, called Building Momentum with all of our neighborhoods, our challenged neighborhoods, coming together and talking about how they're restoring and rebuilding their own neighborhoods in a, in a facility that. Uh, 
in partnership with the federal and provincial governments we now finished as well. So things are looking good for Hamilton. Thank you all very much for your great effort, province, and you know what, let's keep moving forward and let's get this thing done. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Fred. Uh, if everybody could stay seated uh, for a few more minutes, I'd like to call back up the Premier, Minister Del Duca, Minister McMeekin, and Bruce McCraig to take questions from members of the media. Thank you very much. All right. Yes. Premier, uh, Funding is for a billion dollars, up to a billion dollars for capital costs. Uh, is there any possibility of the province helping out with related costs? Infrastructure costs, resurfacing, resurfacing, so the peripheral costs are going to a project. So I'm going to let the minister and Bruce maybe speak to that. Absolutely. So the uh, the commitment is up to one billion dollars for the capital construction costs of the the LRT project. We will be sitting down with the City of Hamilton over the coming weeks to define the scope of the project and what is included. Uh, the Premier made reference to a high order provision for a high order pedestrian connection to the Hunter Street GO station. So we will be talking about details like that. Uh, there is a lot to work out over the coming uh, days and weeks, uh, but uh, the commitment is a, a very solid commitment of up to a billion dollars to proceed with the project. What about the exact route that? Oh, sorry. No, no. no but what about the exact route that it will take? I know that there's been a lot of discussion about King Street, but there have been a lot of businesses in Hamilton that have wanted to see it diverted temporarily. Oh, when will those details be worked? So uh, the route that we're looking at for the alignment of the project is from on the the western anchor here at McMaster University through the downtown area on the alignment that we all know is the B line through to the the Queenston Circle area with a, uh, a connection that goes up James North to the West Harbor GO station and uh, also through to the waterfront area. So we do need to work out uh, all the final details on station locations, for example, uh, but that's the general route. And as has been indicated, uh, we're also uh, going to be talking to the city about the, the ultimate extension of that route uh, easterly to Eastgate Square as well. So, but that's generally the route that we're looking at for the uh, for the project, and that should be a route that's very familiar to the people of the city of Hamilton since it's been discussed in a number of uh, fashion over the years. What about Hamilton, what about the $300 million for the bus transit that uh, the city uh, council has discussed? Uh, uh, so I know that um, certainly over the last number of uh, weeks, couple of months, I know that that request had come forward. Uh, Bruce and the team at Metrolinx and also the folks at MTO did have a number of conversations with uh, with the municipality. The focus of the announcement today is to support, of course, the building of the LRT and the extension of the GO service. That's what we're, uh, we're here today to celebrate. I know there will be additional conversations uh, going forward, not just as it relates to the two items that we are discussing today, that we're announcing today, but also generally speaking, other ways that the province can uh, work creatively with the municipality to find a way uh, to, support, uh, to support additional, um, additional um, I guess, requests. Um, but at this point in time, we are focused on the LRT and on the GO service extension. Does this announcement include uh, any possible procurement of land and finishing the design? Uh, Bruce can correct me if I'm wrong, but my guess is that will form the ongoing discussions. That will be included in the ongoing discussions around the design and the route and everything else that Bruce was talking about. So there definitely are still some details that are required to be worked out. Uh, the Queenston traffic circle end of line. How did that come about and who at the city was involved in those negotiations? We've been talking with the, the city staff over the past uh, number of weeks to look at how we can build a package that would address the, the city's aspirations for both uh, LRT as well as for the GO extension as well. There was a lot of support and desire to see how we could move uh, that project forward. Uh, we also, from a, a provincial and a metro Links perspective, wanted to build in provision for a connection to the new West Harbour GO station. So when we are looking at how do we build in a connection to the West Harbour GO station, still stay within the up to $1 billion budget, where do we focus our attention in the, in the short and medium term? And that's where we, we came to a discussion point with the city about uh, Queenston Circle as an uh, interim uh, eastern terminus for the service. 
but also thinking about in the longer term, how do we look at an extension all the way out to East, East, Eastgate Square, which was part of the original package. So that's basically the evolution of the conversation. And uh, again, uh, I think it really covers the core areas of uh, where there's opportunity to have the closest interchange between uh, the transit development, the land use development, and make the, uh, the most transformational change for the city and for the region. Which level of staff was involved and how long have those talks been going on? Uh, we've been talking at uh, a variety of levels of staff uh, at the city for a number of, of weeks. Uh, so those conversations at the city have been going on, you know, frankly, for, for months and months. We've had a, a very close working relationship with the city uh, over uh, the period of time that we've been looking at uh, opportunities for the extension of both regional transit, more regional transit into the city and this part of the region, as well as the, the local LRT. So uh, it's, a, it's a conversation that's been ongoing for, for some time. Can What's the clarify, cost of the GO can space in the, the uh, Parkway? Can you clarify the GO train schedule when you're going 15 minutes and, and how long that's going to last? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the, first of all, over the next five years, we'll be looking at a 50% increase in our GO services uh, across the network. Uh, and over the 10-year the uh, program of Regional Express Rail will be quadrupling the, the amount of service. The Premier mentioned uh, we currently have about 1,500 rail trips every day on the, uh, the GO system and we'll be increasing that to about 6,000 over the course of the 10 years. In terms of 15-minute service, uh, we'll be looking at 15-minute service and electrified service from Burlington all the way through to Oshawa. And uh, we are also looking at what is the right balance of service between the Hamilton Go Center, the existing Go station, as well as the, the, the West Harbor station that's being built. Uh, we are looking at how do we work with both CP and CN because they're the owners of those two corridors. And of course, we need their approval and agreement for more service and the infrastructure that's needed to support it. But those conversations are very live right now. Uh, who, who's going to run the LRT? Uh, sorry, who's going to run the LRT system? Yeah, one of the uh, uh, conversation points that we do need to have with the city in the, in the coming weeks is details around operations and maintenance. So there will be a discussion with the, the city of Hamilton about how do we, on an ongoing basis, when we open the service, continue to operate and, of course, maintain the service for the next 25 and 30 years. Do you need another vote from council? Um, well, you know, I, I, I'm not going to answer that question on behalf of uh, yeah, on behalf of council, but but our focus really is on making sure that we do move forward. That's why, you know, when you combine both of the announcements today, we're talking in the neighborhood of about 1.2 billion dollars uh, coming to this community to extend the GO service and to build this LRT. And I certainly think, and I certainly think exactly there might be quorum in the room, as the premier is saying. But certainly from the reaction that we heard when the premier made the announcement today, there is obviously tremendous support for moving forward with these uh, with these plans for this community. So the cost of the uh, GO station and Centennial Parkway? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the first part. The cost of the Centennial Parkway uh, station? The, the cost of that entire aspect of this is in the neighborhood of $150 million. Not just the station itself, but additional upgrades to the signals and double tracking. And, and uh, I think I'm right about that. Right, Bruce? Uh, yeah. A right question on. to Bruce McQuaig on Centennial. You're going to have the trains stored at Lewis Road before this station scheduled to open. Are you looking at an interim platform since those trains are already going to be going by the station? You're right that we are in the midst of building a, uh, what we call a layover facility right now for the trains that will be starting service this summer from uh, the West Harbor Station. Uh, we are looking at building a, an interim park and ride facility where people could uh, come to that uh, location, uh, leave their cars, get into the GO bus system and other transit services. Uh, we are looking at uh, building an interim platform. Uh, there are discussions that we need to have with CN to finalize their needs for infrastructure and get their approvals for running passenger service. Well, we do have approval to run uh, trains in the, that are basically the layover into West Harbor. Uh, that's not a scheduled service. It doesn't have to arrive in the part at specific times, so we can fit that around CN schedule. When we are picking up passengers at the new Centennial Station, we have to st stick, of course, to a reliable schedule. Those are the details we need to work out with CN. Can you Last one, please. If you leave from one location in the morning, which location would that be? Is it that you leave from one location in the morning and arrive at a separate location in the afternoon with the two? I'm talking about with HS, uh, the station downtown and the station by Luna. Are the passengers able to leave from the same location and arrive at the same location in the evening? Or do they use a different uh, uh, spot? 
So if I understand your question correctly, with so the opening... So you're going to Toronto, leave at one, depart from one location and arrive at a separate location, is that accurate? So uh, we will have two services uh, going out and into Hamilton in the future. We'll continue to have the service from the, uh, the Hamilton Go Centre at Hunter Street uh, that operates on the CP line and then con uh, converges into Lakeshore West. And we'll also have the new service on the CN line that this summer will start at uh, uh, West Harbour. Now, an individual could uh, in the morning go in from one station and uh, in the evening come back uh, to another station. That's something that would be their choice depending upon where they want to. But they can't come but they, back. But they, but they can come, come back to the station. But they can come back to the station they, they originated from in the morning. No question. Yes. All right, thank you. Last one, please. For a separate issue, yeah. Bill 122 was supposed to ease labor tensions with teachers, but when you seem to find ourselves in the same situation already with Bill 122, so would you consider making specific changes so that this doesn't happen again? So, so um, you know, if, um, if it were possible to write legislation that would guarantee that there would never be labor unrest ever again, I'm sure politicians would be thrilled to do that. What Bill 122 was intended to do was to put in place a formal process that reflected the reality, that reflects the reality that um, since changes were made uh, under the previous government in terms of funding education, where you've got a provincial funder and you've got local issues, that there needs to be a process that reflects that. So there needs to be a, a formal uh, provincial discussion and there need to be formal um, local discussions. That was the reality before, uh, before we put the legislation in place. When I was Minister of Education, we had an informal process that was something like that. But there had not been any formal, uh, any formal reflection of that. So that's what Bill 122 did. It put in place and has put in place a process whereby there is a, a negotiation at a central table between the federations and unions in the education system with the province and the school boards at the table. And there is a local process between the, those same federations and unions at the local level with the, with the school boards. Now, the, the fact is that right now we're in a difficult negotiation because we're operating in a net zero environment where there isn't new money for uh, compensation and, and at the same time we are using this new process. If there are changes that we need to make to the process once we're, uh, we're through this, then we can, we can look at that. But I think we have to, we have to just be careful not to conflate the two things. The fact is that we're dealing in a difficult environment because of the, uh, the fiscal situation in the province and the reality that there is no new money for, uh, for compensation. And at the same time, we have to have a process that reflects the reality that, that the province funds education in a way that before 1996, 1997, it didn't. Before, before those years, um, local school boards had the ability to raise uh, tax levy in their own jurisdictions. That changed and I can tell you when I was Minister of Education, boards were not eager to go back to that. You know, they, they, uh, they understand that it is a more equitable system to have the province funding uh, across, the, uh, across the province. So while we have that reality, we have to deal with a, a negotiating process that reflects that. Last one, please. Something like Manitoba has where teachers can't strike, but if it gets to that point, it goes automatically to binding arbitration. Well, you know, that, that's not something that we have looked at. I, you know, I have a lot of faith in the collective bargaining process. I know that it has been a challenge in, uh, in a few boards so far. Um, I believe that we can get uh, deals at the central table and at the, at the local, uh, local tables. And I, I really believe that we have, to, we have to focus our energy there. The moment we're at right now is that we've got some kids who have been out of school for a number of weeks. We need to get those kids back into school and the Education Relations Commission has been in place for many decades and it has ruled that those kids' years are in jeopardy. This is not something new. This is something that has happened in the past. It is part of a, a process that's been in place in this province and so we are respecting that advice and we are moving to, uh, to get those kids back to school. I, you know, I would like to have the, uh, part, the, all of the parties in the legislature work with us so we could get the kids back to school, but remember, while we're doing that, while we're getting the students back to school, 
The fact is that the collective bargaining process will go on. You know, we still have to get a deal at the table. There still has to be a respectful discussion there, and that's what we're going to engage in. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Merci. And congratulations.